Hello guys, hope you're all well out there. I'm just taking you on a journey with me today because I've just been called out to a crepe restaurant in the city centre where they have an issue with their electrics. And I know you like a little bit of fault finding, you guys, so I thought I would take you with me and see if I can show you what the situation is. I have no idea what to expect, to be honest, but I imagine that maybe there'll be some burning involved because crepe restaurant, they're running a lot of heavy kind of heating equipment and stuff. So I'm guessing that there might be a fair bit of, you know, dodgy stuff going on. So I thought it might be an interesting job to show you. So before we get into it, hit thumbs up. If you enjoy my videos, it helps the channel to grow. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you over there. So here we are, and basically what I found was that the sockets under the cabinets, which were being used to power the crep machine, had no power. And the lady had already taken the cover off a couple of the sockets to try and figure out what was going on. She had a look, everything looked fine. So she was like, okay, time to call an electrician. And the interesting thing is that I immediately thought, okay, let's check the consumer unit because maybe something's tripped. So I asked her, did you check the consumer unit? And she said, yeah, everything was on. So first of all, I like to do a little recce on these kind of things. Now it's so awkward in here, it's so tight for space, as you can see. But I just tried to, first of all, just trace the cables because they were wired in this kind of NYYJ high tough type cable which is a little bit unusual and I thought maybe they were running back to a switch fuse connection unit or something or oh, an isolator switch Fantastic. where maybe Lovely. the power had been isolated so I just spent a bit of time rummaging around in the cupboards and trying to figure out where the cables came from and which sockets were on that particular circuit so there was these two in this cupboard and then in the cupboard next to it, there was one socket as well. Um, I tried to chase the NYYJ cables, but there were several going in various directions. So I just had a little poke around in this cupboard back here. Absolutely horrible, full of grease and nastiness, mouse traps and stuff. <laughs> uh, but this is the joys of working in a commercial kitchen, unfortunately. It's never nice. Let me know in the comments if you guys do a lot of work like this. I do take my hat off to you if you do because it is not my favorite place to be but as you can see under here there was nothing really evident it was just more of these high tough cables going to some of the other sockets further along in the cupboards really rubbish installation I mean the whole thing's just been slung in basically nothing clipped up quite a lot of excess cabling that was just tucked around everywhere but visually it all looked in good condition at least there was no damage to any of the cables or anything like that often i would guess uh, rodent damage so a particular uh, fault like this here, because they, of the nature of restaurants they do tend to attract rodents but in this okay, case i couldn't see any rodent damage to any of the cables and it's just a case of trying to trace where the cables go but when it's so tight in these kind of cupboards it's really really tricky to actually find where the cables go to So looking at it, I realized that basically this cupboard had more cables and more sockets in it. And of course it's full of stuff, so I had to empty the cupboard out. And amongst the jumble of cables and boxes and first aid kits and all sorts of junk, uh, I could see that there was a socket in there that had its cover removed as well. 
So I got my plug-in tester and I thought I'd just plug into these various sockets and see if they're live. So this one was live. And then the one below it was also live. So those ones were okay, but there was another one further back with the cover loose, which started to ring alarm bells to me. So I thought, okay, let's check that one out. And when I plugged my plug-in tester, that one was dead. No power at all. Now the interesting thing is there was a, a twin and earth cable coming into it and then the high tough cable going out. So this appeared to be the first point on the circuit. And all the cables and connections looked okay. So then my question in my mind is, well where does that twin and earth cable go to? And maybe the board is suspect. Because sometimes what happens is you've got circuit breakers that are turned on but they're actually faulty and there's no power coming out of them. So I decided to check the consumer unit, just take the cover off and to test the outgoing side of all the circuit breakers to see if maybe one of the circuits was faulty and no power was actually coming out of the circuit breaker. So a little bit of juggling with the camera and I managed to put it up out of the way and just take the cover off this board. Um, so everything looked okay inside but I thought well what I'll do is just get my voltage tester and just test the outgoing side of all the MCBs and just see if there's actually any power coming out of the all the breakers. So all of the cables were live coming out of the circuit breakers, all of the out outgoing terminals of the MCBs were all live and then I just did some checks from the neutral bar as well just to make sure that there was voltage not only from uh, line to CPC but also line to neutral which there was. So I kind of... Um, started to wonder, am I going mad here? What is going on? Maybe there's a junction box somewhere or maybe there's a damaged cable still on that twin and earth that comes into that socket. But yeah, I was starting to wonder really, uh, how can I find this fault? So I decided to try and trace this twin and earth cable feeding into the socket to see where that went back to because presumably wherever that went back to was the cause of the problem. Uh, but they kind of bunched everything up together with these cable ties and stuff. It was a bit of a mess. It looked like three different radial circuits coming into this cupboard, basically. So I had to try and sort of pull the twin and earth cables around a bit and trace back. And of course it went off into a really awkward place. Now this is where a volt pen comes in really handy actually because it just helps you to differentiate between the live cable, which obviously it wasn't, and the non-live cables, which is the one that we wanted. So when you've got three cables bunched together, you, if you can separate them, use a volt pen, you can figure out which one's which. And that was quite handy actually as it came to tracing things back. So I had to pull the fridge out, and here I am behind the, the fridges, and there were as you can see a whole bunch of twin and earth cables coming through there going to various points Sorry. so there was the uh, socket here for the fridge okay. yeah. and then there was another socket for the other fridge so I had to pull the other fridge out as well a real mess of cables, a real spaghetti of cables but slowly I started to get the picture of kind of where the cables were going back to so I thought well let's do a bit of a process of elimination here so as you can see we've got a socket up here 
which the fridge was plugged into so I thought check check that make sure that it's not on that circuit and that socket was live so it wasn't that check the other one here as well that was also live so it wasn't either of those cables so slowly kind of eliminating various points that could be problematic but these twin and earth white cables coming through here one of those it seems sorry was the one that had the problem so I had to kind of wrestle with all these appliances pull the fridge pull the other fridge out get that out of the way and then I could see behind to where those cables actually went to because I thought well they're going back to somewhere but it's kind of the opposite direction to where the distribution board is so it seems seemed a bit weird I checked those cables with my volt pen and one of them was indeed dead according to the volt pen and that cable went down into that hole in the corner so now I'm thinking okay well where does it go after that you know it goes under the floorboards great now I'm gonna to have to try and start getting floorboards up maybe there's a junction box under the floor or something you know your mind starts to kind of boggle as to what the problem could be and uh, you just start to think oh man this is gonna be a nightmare but I could see some pipes going through the floor so that is the the dead cable so I give that a pull and you can see that that is potentially the one that we are looking for and it, indeed it does go into that hole in the floor along with a heck of a lot of other cables and then to the left you can see those pipes going through and I could see a little bit of light coming through so that it looked like the pipes go straight through the ceiling to the floor below which is the basement and potentially the cables go through the ceiling as well so now I'm thinking okay let's go downstairs into the basement and let's see if we can see anything below see if we can find those cables the other side of the floor so I grab a few tools and head downstairs So I can immediately see this oh, trunking this on the ceiling, which is a big trunking. And this one cable coming down is the dado, but I can also see the pipes on the ceiling that came through from above. So I know that I'm getting warm. And as soon as I trace visually that trunking, it goes along the ceiling. And guess what I find? Ah, there's another DB, look. Ha! Oh my goodness. All right. Ah, everything's on. Oh no, there we go, off. That's it. Ah, oh, man. That will be, that will be it, I bet. Yep. I'll be the one. Crazy. So I went back down to isolate that circuit so that I could put the socket outlet back together and then do some final testing basically. So um, flick the circuit breaker off and then headed back up to put the covers on. Now it's just so tight in these kind of cupboards that even a simple job like fitting a socket face back on is just a real bit of a real, real nightmare. You've got to kind of 
just work at such weird, awkward angles. Like sort of one-handed screwdriver tightening. <laughs> really difficult in this kind of small space. But I managed it, but then one of the screws was missing and I just saw it in the cracks between the floorboards and thank goodness for magnetic screwdrivers. There you go. Good old Klein screwdrivers, link in the description. So I just wanted to check the connections on these sockets while I was there, just to make sure that they're all tight before I put, put them back. Hey, do you have the screws from that socket that you took off? Yeah, you still have the one that you, you found. Uh, yes, it was, um, I'll, I'll explain to you in a minute, but it's, it's, it should be all fine now. Um, so the lady had kindly uh, kept the screws in the little pot where they keep the tips <laughs> so I uh, managed to salvage the screws because I didn't have any with me in the car park it was about 10 minutes walk away and uh, managed to get that cover screwed back on So here what I was doing was just plugging in my earth loop impedance tester, my uh, fluke multifunction tester and doing a ZS reading at each socket just to make sure that everything was as would be expected. Obviously um, you know, that gives me a polarity reading as well and it just to make sure that I'm leaving the circuit in a safe condition um, because you know I don't know for sure why it had tripped. Presumably it was just an appliance plugged in, but you can never tell, so you want to leave everything in a safe condition for the customer. So I did ZS on all three sockets, and then I did some RCD tests as well, just to make sure that the RCBO is working correctly. Alright guys, well that is it, all done and dusted, and that's how it goes sometimes. Um, but as you can see, I absolutely hate doing commercial installs, like fault finding is just a nightmare. Like you can see there, there's just stuff everywhere, you're working around people, uh, it's just such a challenge. So anyway, it's all back on, um, circuits on. I'm gonna just explain to the customer what happened now. Basically, I think it was just an appliance that was plugged in and had a little bit of an issue, tripped the um, circuit breaker, and because they didn't know where it is, they couldn't find how to reset it. So, because it was buried in all this junk, you know. <laughs> That's safety-wise, you know, fire safety-wise and stuff, it's not really ideal having uh, a distribution board in the basement where you end up inevitably storing loads of stuff everywhere. Uh, but it happens so often. I mean, I don't know many small shops and companies like this that have enough space to have a dedicated room where the distribution equipment is. It's all just a hodgepodge. It's always the way it is, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Right, so, back at the car, uh, 
and a um, couple of nice little surprises on the way back to the car. Um, number one, before you leave, they said, oh, why not have a crepe? So I've got a lovely um, cheese and ham crepe to munch away on now, which I'm quite pleased with, because it is lunchtime. Uh, so let's see if it's any good. Very nice. The other thing was, I put my parking ticket in to the machine, because I'm in a multi-storey car park, because I'm right in the city centre. And it said on the screen, nothing to pay. That's like a miracle. That never happens in Cambridge. I don't know what's happened, but I'm guessing they're trying to encourage people to come into the city centre, maybe. Free parking in the city centre. That is, like, insane. So, yeah, a little bit of a win there which compensates for crawling around in a greasy kitchen under, underneath units and stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely hate it. But sometimes it has to be done. The real life of an electrician. I mean, it was an office day for me again today and none of the guys were available. So I was just like, look, I'll just go out and do it. You know, we have worked for them before and trying to keep customers happy. So they're happy, power's back on now. They can crack on with making out loads of crepes, which is all good. City centre was super busy today. Absolutely mad, there's tons of people, but I guess today it's it's end of lockdown. So, well, you know, pubs are open, pub gardens are gonna be open and stuff like that. So everyone's getting in the vibe of summer, I think, and uh, starting to get out and about. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little video. Um, hope it was interesting to you. Smash the thumbs up if you liked it subscribe if you haven't done so already and we'll see you on the next one thank you all of you for watching and have a great day